hi, and thanks for tuning in to this video. Uh, what I want to do today is show off a boat. This is a rather large project I just finished for a customer. The customer was up in Los Angeles. I'm down here in San Diego. Uh, he bought the boat. Uh, he bought the seat I'm sitting on, uh, some other stuff for the boat, and then he ordered a bunch of stuff for me. Everything he ordered from third parties, Amazon and, and Scout, he actually had drop shipped straight to me instead of to his place in Los Angeles. Uh, I have assembled the boat and put everything together for him, and then he's going to come down and pick it up. So what I'm going to do in this video is walk you around and show you the various things that I make for scouts to uh, improve your fishing experience. So I'll start up here at the bow. These are license plate holders. Uh, they're about 25 inches long. They'll hold the standard set of numbers, and in California, the two stickers, a muscle sticker and your, and your annual sticker. It's just clips on with carabiners that are supplied with it. And then I run a bungee cord underneath the bow, uh, underneath the nose, over to the other side. And what that does is it prevents these from flopping up in the wind. The next thing is the on the stabilizer bar is these rod holders. These are single rod holders that you can clamp on, one on each side, or, or yeah, you can put them where you want. You can actually overlap them if you want. Uh, they'll hold... Um, Typical inshore tackle and light tackle. This is a 25 pound setup. Uh, I don't think that I would actually use this for heavy duty trolling because uh, the stabilizer bar itself is not really well set up to be a trolling platform. You can see the brace kind of comes down into the uh, pontoon a little bit. But as rod storage, they're very inexpensive. I also make a double. Uh, this is actually my own stabilizer bar for my own boat, and it's got uh, one clamping set up that holds two of these rod holders. Uh, this is less than uh, twice the price of a single, so this is a better bargain per rod if you're looking to store a lot of rods. The rod tubes on these holders are what I call the plain rod tubes. They're just a straight section of one and a half inch PVC pipe. Uh, I can also supply it with a slot machined into it for fly rods. This is an eight weight with a very small fighting butt. I don't think this would work with a larger fighting butt, uh, but it just, it just slides right in and would hold a uh, fly rod. Also on a spinning reel, it would go down into this slot. On a casting reel, it would help to cradle it so that the reel doesn't flop around. So you can get these uh, either with plain tubes or with these slotted tubes. Next, working my way back from the bow is the bait tank. Uh, this tank will hold about 12 gallons of water up to about this level. You don't want it too high or the water will slosh out. Uh, there's actually a lid for it that comes with it. Uh, this tank is set up with extra carry handles on the sides and two rod holders. You can also get the tank, just plain tank, with no handles and with no rod holders. The rod holders are nice to carry and put your net in and maybe an extra rod. Uh, the outlet tube is up here. And so the water builds up to here and flows out this tube over the side. And now from your seat in the back, you'll be able to watch the water come out and be sure. And that will reassure you that the pump is working and the water is flowing through the system. The inlet tube actually is right here and comes in down low on this. And then it snakes back on hooks, which clamp onto this track. Uh, or if you don't have a track, I also make hooks that clamp onto the oar for routing this hose back to the back of the boat. And uh, I'll show you the bait tank pump when we get back there. When it's time to pack up your bait tank, you can just unscrew this hose and drop it into the tank. And then this long hose stays attached, but it disconnects back at the pump. And you can just wrap it up and put it inside the tank. And it makes a fairly reasonable way to transport, to transport the bait tank. So the next thing we encounter on our trip around the boat is the mount for the fish finder. This happens to be a Garmin Echo Map. Uh, I believe it's a 74, it, and it has a nut and a track bolt that comes up. So to remove it from the boat at the end of the day, you can just take that off and then put this back on to keep this in place on the track. Or you can slide this off the track real easily from there and just pop it out and put the clamping knob back on. And this mount, uh, the Garmin comes with built-in rotation ability, so the way this mount is built it takes advantage of that. So now you can rotate this mount any way you want it. And of course, now this is part of the Garmin mount. You can rotate it this way. So it gives you a lot of flexibility on your setup. 
Uh, what I do is I run the transducer from the rear, and we'll be showing you the transducer mount in a moment. I run it under the floor, come back on top of the floor over here, over to here, so that I have very little cable. I like to keep a really clean floor, especially for fly fishing. Uh, so that is the uh, fish finder mount. I can do this for Lowrance and Hummingbird products. Um, for one or the other, I forget which, you'll, you'll have to get me the fish finder so that I can make up the mount to fit. Uh, for the other one, I actually have the design worked out, but I'm perfectly willing to do custom mounts on this too, so I can add, get hold of the fish finder to work it out so I can add it to my catalog. So the next thing working our way back is uh, the ore setup. This is the ore extender, this little piece here that comes from Scout. Uh, and then this is a piece I make, and I call it an ore adapter. And what it does is it allows you to once you put the ore extenders on, the clip for it is way up here. And so what would happen is the ore ends up angled way up here. And it, will, it gets in the way of my horizontal rod system. And I'll be showing this in a moment. But if you get the horizontal rod rack, you really have to set up the ores this way or the ores will be in the way. So this works real easily. This just pops right out of the holder. Okay, and then you can swing the ore around and use it. I just use it with the, uh, with the clips attached. And then you just put it right back in. So I just leave this permanently attached. But this just slides right on. You can pop it on and pop it off very, very easily. So if you're going to use the horizontal rod rack system, you really do need uh, my ore adapter and from Scout, the ore lock extension, it's called. So that brings us to the horizontal rod system. This is a very popular uh, product that I make. It consists of... Uh, set up in the back to hold the butt ends of the rods. This can be done in one or two or three uh, rod holders. Again, this can be the plain tubes or it can be the slotted tubes that I showed earlier in the video. If you have fly rods, that's particularly nice uh, because the three rods uh, just sit in with the reels upright and everything is very neat. Uh, so the rods are right here at hand when you're in your seat. If you want to pop a rod out, it's very easy to grab it. When you're done with that rod, it's easy to slide it back in and put it back into the, the holder. The tip holders up here clamp onto a, an accessory that goes on the track. And by the way, if you're going to use the horizontal rod system, you really do have to have a track up here. Uh, this is the Big Fish track system. Um, and so this, this rod holder tip setup has locking gates that you can rotate around. Uh, and again, the nice thing is you can reach all of this right here from, from the seat. So you can rotate these around and lock the rod into place. Another feature as part of this uh, rod rack system is the way the uh, butt ends work. Each one of these is separate and they're hooked up with a little pivoting uh, coupler in between. So what you can do is, first I'll set it up a little bit, you can actually spread these apart real easily uh, down flush if you wanted wider uh, spacing between your reels because they're interfering or whatever. Um, or you can just uh, pop them together and you can do one or both or none uh, set up that way. And then be sure and retighten this. You want this to be pretty darn tight so it doesn't come off when you're at high speed. That would be a bad thing. So that's the, uh, the back end of the uh, horizontal rod rack system. So for heavier duty trolling, uh, you really should use a commercial uh, rod holder, either something bolted to the transom but these are Yak Attack uh, rod holders. Uh, I happen to really like these. Uh, they're real easy to to rotate without getting them out of the rod uh, out of the clip. Uh, they're real easy to remove and put back on again. They're real easy to reposition by just loosening this up. Uh, the standard bolts that come with Yak Attack and Scotty and most other track mounted rod holders don't fit this track. They can be modified to fit the track, and it's not that hard, and I show in a different video how to do that. But I also supply the track with typically six or eight bolts, a uh, quarter 20 bolts that do in fact work with the track and will fit pretty much everybody's um, track-mounted rod holder. Uh, certainly Scotty and Yak Attack. Now for uh, RAM, the RAM bolts actually fit just fine. Uh, so there's a whole lot of other accessories from uh, various manufacturers that you can buy that will fit onto this track and work just fine with it. So as we keep working our way around, this is the pump for the bait tank. 
It's a 350 gallon per hour pump uh, is the rating. Uh, it works on a clamp mount that goes right on the transom, so it's really, really easy to take it off. Uh, yeah, loosen that up enough, and now you can whoops, swing this out so it clears the transom. A really unique part of the design of this is this scoop. I replaced the bottom intake on these pumps with something I 3D print. It's got a shelf that fits up under the transom so that at high speed, clean water is coming into the pump, and it actually rams into the pump and, uh, and helps with the water flow going to the bait tank. Uh, so with, with any side-mounted pump, you have to take it out of the water because none of the side arms are strong enough to hold the pump in the water. And so your, your, your bait is going without fresh water while you're moving from place to place. And if you're moving a long distance, that's an actual problem. With this, you just run it all the time. Uh, so to put this on, you would, you would slide it on, make sure it's underneath, and so forth. I can make this for any size transom up to about 16 inches maximum. Uh, I will need to know your transom height uh, in order to do it. Uh, I attach a cable, and if uh, you buy a battery from me, it'll come with the proper connector to plug into the battery. Uh, if you don't, you'll just get a pair of bare wires down here for you to put your own connector on it. Another feature on this is the way um, the, the tube comes in. This, uh, this gray blob that looks like an egg on the bottom here is actually a check valve. It's a cartridge check valve. You can unscrew this half and take it out and clean it and put it back in if you want to. Uh, you'll probably never have to do that. The hose actually attaches through what is the typical garden hose fitting. So at the end of the day, when you're coming back to the dock, what you would do is just reach over the, the transom here and unscrew this hose and let it dangle in the water. And it's low enough, it will now siphon water out of the tank up in front down to where there's only a couple of inches left in the tank. Uh, that's a real advantage when you're trying to get back to the dock and get this thing out of the boat. Because when that tank is full of water, it's about 100 pounds of water. This will get you down to 10 pounds or even less. So it'll be easier to lift out. So what you do is when you're setting up to go fishing, you just attach this hose back up again. And so this is the next thing to show. And it's the transducer for the pump and it's actually mounted on a strap underneath the pontoon. So when it's time to take the transducer off the boat or put it on, again, it's best to do it when there's water under the, the transom. You don't want to scrape your, your fine transducer along a sandy or a rocky shore when it's up on land. So you would just slide it off here and it's, it's, a, it's a harness, it's a cradle uh, made out of webbing. And so to put it on, you just slide it back on and get it lined up and uh, plug it together. And again, you want to make sure when you're done that the strap is really very tight. Uh, the cable for it, of course, goes up over the transom. And again, I run it under the floor all the way up to the bow, come back on top of the floor, back to the fish finder so that the cable's out of the way. I really dislike cables running around boats. I should point out a couple of things about the uh, pontoon mounted transducer. One is it only works with Garmin transducers, at least it's as far as I found. Humminbird and Lowrance transducers both have a, a feature on them sticking up that fits into their, to their tra uh, transom bracket for their transducers. And as a result, you can't pull the, the transducer up flush against the pontoon. So this will only work with Garmin for their uh, striker series and echo map and so forth. Uh, if you have a different Garmin transducer than that, let me look, take a look and I can tell you whether I can outfit it with one of these. If you can't do this, then I also make a clamp mount, again, for transoms from 12 inches up to about 16 inches, just like this, only it's holding a transducer on it. And this setup is pretty much what I think you ought to use, and that's the pump on the port side and the transducer on the starboard side. Uh, with the transducer on the starboard side, Garmin says you get less uh, turbulence out of the motor prop. Uh, one of the reasons I like the pontoon mount is it gets it even further away from the motor and gets you into a little bit cleaner water. So I find typically a transom mount uh, uh, transducer only works about seven or eight miles an hour, where this works well up to about 12 miles an hour or so. Uh, your mileage will vary. Uh, and you can still see an image even at 16. It's just got a lot of noise on it. And I'm still working to try to figure out how we can get very clean images on these transducers at very high speeds, but I'm not there yet. Uh, 
so I'm showing the fish finder and the pump. So this is this customer's battery system for it. It's a 15 amp hour, uh, 12 volt battery system, master switch. It's got three outlets, one for the fish finder, one for the bait tank with its own switch on and off, and one auxiliary output, which you might use, for instance, for nav lights or something like that right here. And this one also has USB outlet, dual port USB. So you can charge your cell phone while you're going, or you can power a GoPro. You can also get this without the USB, or you can get it with both a USB and a 12 volt adapter. And these batteries would be fine for running, say, your electrical pump. So you don't tie to your car to try to get power to run your, your pump to pump up your boat. So that's the battery box. Uh, you'll see on the website there are a variety of different configurations of this. This one is lead acid. I also supply this with a uh, lithium iron phosphate battery, which is actually what I have for my boat. Uh, you can get a, a smaller 8 amp hour battery, which would be appropriate pretty much for the bait tank alone, you know, in a smaller, totally waterproof container. This container is not entirely waterproof. It's splash proof but it's not waterproof. And of course, from here down, it is waterproof. So as long as you don't capsulize this container, it's fine. The next thing working our way around the boat is this bag. This bag is really, in my humble opinion, a very, very cool accessory that you really ought to have if you're gonna get one of my, one of my setups. Uh, it's got uh, two rows of pockets in front. Uh, I keep mine right behind my seat because it's got things I wanna be able to reach quickly. It's got my sunscreen in it. It's got an, uh, an air horn in it. It's got uh, some pliers and lip grabbers. And on the back, uh, there are pockets on the back of this thing where I keep uh, my, uh, my registration and uh, license for the boat. Uh, it just clips right on with a couple of carabiners and a couple of clips. You can put this anywhere along the track. I happen to like it right behind the seat because there's lots of room back here to, uh, to put something like that. This is the seat this customer chose. It's a wise standard seat. It's, uh, I think, about 65 bucks as of the time of this video. Uh, it works real nice. You can swing all the way around. Uh, you can sit back and put your feet up. You can fish with your feet over the side if you want to. Um, it's mounted. This folds down. It's actually mounted on an Atwood setup where it, it's an Atwood swivel. And then this is an Atwood quick disconnect plate. And so what that does is make it really, really easy to just slide the seat in and lock it into place and pop it off when you're done at the end of the day and you want to pack up and, and store things. Now this seat has actually a one inch riser under, you can see there. And that's something I do make. And that one inch riser is required if you get my track system uh, because you need to raise the seat up. You need to raise the seat up just a tiny amount is one inch so that when you swing, it clears the knobs on the track, the mounting knobs and anything you might have on the track. This is a GoPro mount, track mount. Uh, it has lots of degrees of freedom. You can rotate the arm really easily by in the how stiff it is is controlled by how much you tighten down these two screws. You can uh, raise it up and down. You can uh, take it out of the holder and actually use it as a selfie stick or use it uh, to take an underwater shot. And it's easy to put right back into the holder. I make a very, very similar uh, uh, camera setup that goes up on the stabilizer bar. So you can have one camera here, you can have a camera on the stabilizer bar. I actually fish with the one on the stabilizer bar and then I wear one on a chest strap. So that's the camera holder. And again, it's just, uh, you can be put on anywhere on the track that you want. It's easy to swing it around backwards to take front looking shots, side, whatever you want to take a look at. This is the coffee holder. Uh, like the, uh, like the tips holder, to get it off when you're trying to stow the boat, you just pop it out, and then you can uh, you can put it right back in again, and tighten these down. Uh, I happen to have a very very skinny mug. This uh, fits it perfectly, but there's also a ring here with three screws. You pop that ring out, and it would fit a more conventional size uh, travel mug. You can put your coffee there. 
So as I've gone around the boat, I've talked uh, about things that go on the track and whether the track is necessary for some other part. What I haven't talked about is the track itself. Uh, this boat is set up with two tracks, and this is, I, I think, just really a sweet setup for a Scout 430. One goes from the transom all the way up to the middle seat. The other one goes from the transom to, I don't know, a good 18 or 20 inches in front of the back seat. Uh, that gives you lots and lots of, tra of uh, track space up in front of the seat. Gives you track space behind uh, the well where things aren't in the way. Uh, the other thing this does is it stabilizes this seat. If you're going to put a bass type seat or a swivel seat on this boat, it can rock on the pontoons and you've got to stabilize it. By overlapping the transom, that happens. So when I sit in the seat, that presses this bar down on both sides, rests against the seat, and now you're rock solid stable. Uh, for, for most people, one track is enough stabilization. Uh, for heavier people, you're going to want two tracks to stabilize. Now, Scout also sells a bass seat stabilizer. It's just it's a simple uh, square tube that goes from the seat and then comes back and overlaps that. So if you're not buying my track, then uh, the thing to do would be buy the, uh, the, uh, the Scout stabilizer. Now, you can get these tracks pretty much in any length, going from transom to rear seat, transom to middle, transom all the way to front. I can't ship them when they're that long because they're, they're just way expensive to ship once they get that long. Uh, but I did one for one customer, which was two rails that went all the way from the transom to the front seat. Uh, and he did a pickup here in San Diego. Uh, the, the take a track down at the end of your fishing day, you would pop uh, anything you had on here off. So what I'm going to do is take that off. I would leave this on because then it's real easy to attach. I would unclip, unclip my bag. And I would uh, put that away. I would come up here, loosen up the camera setup, and, and slide that out. And up here, of course, my coffee would have been removed. I would take these loose, pop that guy out so that he's not out and likely to get broken, and tighten the screws down. And again, now I know where it goes next time when I'm ready to set up. And then all you do is unloosen these two knobs, like so, and pop this guy off once I get all the way out of the nuts. Uh, there are custom nuts underneath. There we go. Now, uh, these have uh, little sliding, ro rotating tabs on them, and there are tabs here on the track, and you would tie a string from here to here so that when you take this off, these will flop around in the string, but you won't lose them. Okay, and then the other side is the same, except there's one track in the rear seat and one track all the way up in the uh, uh, middle seat. Or one bolt, I mean, not track. Okay, so as I say, you can order these in lots of different lengths. Uh, prices uh, for each length are on bigfish.com. So when I set up, all I have to do is screw that in. Go get my uh, mug holder. And loosen these guys up so it'll go in. Okay, so that's ready to go. Tighten that down. Put that on. Uh, this guy was left in place, so it's ready to go. So I can just drop my, uh, my rod holder on. Uh, this guy, I would the camera holder, camera swivel. Now, what I could have done was left the entire swivel in place, and that's probably a smarter thing, and just unloosen this and take out the camera pull. Uh, but for this demonstration, I took out the camera pull. Okay, so we'll get that slide, slide, slid in, get that slid in, and then run these nuts down. So as I was saying, probably a better way to do this one, I should have thought of that, is just loosen this and pop that out, and then I would leave this in place so that it's all set up and ready to go the next time I use the boat. It's strong and it's not going to get broken kicking around in a truck. And then, of course, you take your bag and just clip it right back into the places it goes in here. So setting up a track and taking it down is, is actually really quick. You can do it while things are inflating if you want. Uh, it doesn't add much to the overall setup time on one of these boats. So that pretty much completes the tour of this customer's boat. Uh, it's been really been a fun project working with him. Um, the stuff I do is, is very customized. Uh, for quite willing to whatever you want to hold on this track system, I'm quite willing to to work on doing that. 
Uh, I, for one customer, I did a cigar holder for fun. So if you have a special need or if you have a, a fish finder that I haven't talked about or whatever, get in touch with me and we'll talk about it. Generally, I'll do, if I can, if it looks like something I actually want to add to my catalog, I'll do the design for free just to have the opportunity to get hold of the item so I can actually do the design and work it out. So again, thanks very much for watching. Uh, you can go to VixFish.com and get a look at these products. I'm constantly developing new products. And so after this video is completed, there may be other things that show up in, uh, on VixFish.com. Thanks again for watching.